Whenever we talk about the city of Leipzig, the first composer that comes to mind would be Johann Sebastian Bach himself. However, there have also been many other composers who lived and worked here. Robert and Clara Schumann are two of them. Behind me is the Schumann House. It is the place where Robert and Clara Schumann have lived in the 1840s. Join me now and let's take a look at their house. This room that we're standing in was the room where a lot of family and friends uh, would gather and the Schumanns kind of became this like magnet for anyone who was interested in uh, the newest music currents going on. They would come here, um, they would play uh, pieces either that they composed, like Mendelssohn uh, would come here very often and play his music, um, or they would talk about different music. They would also play Bach. So this is a very special place, especially since we tried to keep it as historically accurate and authentic as possible. These uh, floorboards are original floorboards from the time that the Schumanns lived here. And the patterns on the walls were also found uh, during the renovation after 18 layers had been scraped away, they found these drawings and these patterns, which you can see, this is just one example of one place where they found it, and then they um, were able to reconstruct it and continue it on throughout the entire room. So that was a real treasure, finding that and knowing that the Schumanns uh, had these when they lived here. Here we're seeing Clara and Robert Schumann. Was this here already when they were living in this apartment? No, this was a double portrait that was made later. Um, probably they didn't have necessarily the means of making this or didn't think of it when they first, as newlyweds, moved in here. But in Dusseldorf, they had this made. And um, the anecdote goes that Robert Schumann was looking in on Ernst Richel, who was a famous sculptor at the time, who was making this. Um, and he saw that he had placed the lady in front. Um, and Robert oh, so Schumann, Clara was outside. She was in front. She was in front and okay. he was in back, not the way that it is here. And he didn't like that. And he said, um, you need to change that. And his argumentation was that the composing, the creating artist uh, needs to be in the foreground and the interpreting artist, Clara as a pianist, would need to be take a back seat and, and do as serve the composing artist. And that was his argumentation that he needs to be in front. But of course we know that Clara also composed she many, also many composed. works. He also did um, always encourage her to compose. And in general, I like the idea that they are looking in the same direction. And that, I think, is a good symbol for yes. their marriage. They were really trying to find one heart and one mind, both uh, personally but musically as well. Clara Schumann was a child prodigy. Definitely. Along like Mendelssohn and Mozart, thanks to her parents. Yes, yes, and even though she was a girl, a woman, um, she was uh, very impressive to anybody who experienced her playing. Friedrich Wieck put all of his energy into educating his daughter and forming her career because his dream was for her to become um, a famous pianist. She seemed to really take to his structured daily plan for her, which was several hours of practicing, one or two hours of lessons with him, Sometimes also he would bring in, like the Thomas Cantor at the time, uh, would give her counterpoint lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, and she also studied with other important people, musical um, authorities in Leipzig. And, and then she also composed. Uh, so these were the things that he had her do every day, but then she also had to take a walk for one hour per day. here, we're not sure if she played on this piano or if this was a piano that was here, but one similar to that would have been here. And sometimes when she went on her concert tours, she would also have her pianos brought with, or she would wow. dictate exactly what kind of piano she wanted to have there because she learned that that's also an important thing for an artist. So not just the keyboard, but we're talking about the entire piano. Sometimes, Goes yes. Goes with her on the boat, on the train and all that. Depending on what the conditions allowed, yeah. They went to two tours in 1842. They went to um, Copenhagen, to Denmark. And actually, Robert Schumann kind of 
returned to Leipzig uh, from Hamburg because he needed to get back to their daughter and to yes. his composing. And she continued on to play for the Queen in uh, Copenhagen. And that was their first major concert tour. Um, as a married couple. As a married couple yes, together. Yes, of yes. course, she'd been to Paris and Vienna and uh, all kinds of places before as a young girl. Right. And then in 1844, they took all kinds of means of transportation from the post coach, the train and the steamship and pulled by a sleigh through the winter because they went all the way up to St. Petersburg and then to Moscow to play for the Tsar's family in Moscow. And Robert Schumann went with on that because he didn't enjoy so much the time that they were apart when she went to Copenhagen. For well, four months. For four months, it's a long time to be away from two children. And so that was kind of a, a difficult time also for Robert Schumann because she was in the spotlight, always playing, and he as a composer was just not quite so known yet. And so that was kind of a difficult thing to navigate as a couple of the 19th century. And people were quite impressed with Clara Schumann's playing. Yes. Sometimes more so than Robert Schumann. Oh, definitely. I mean, he wasn't <laughs> playing at all. And sometimes she would try to play his works, but she would always kind of sandwich them in between works that were more known, just to kind of keep her audiences engaged, just like we do today with contemporary music. We try to kind of sandwich them between works that we know audiences will want to hear. And she got very good at that. The way that she organized her programs is shaped the way that people um, do their recitals today. Later here, during their time, they went through the Well-Tempered Clavier um, by Bach together. They did a, a very uh, structured study, went through the whole book together. And um, of course, that deepened her knowledge of Bach and Robert Schumann used his tools as, as a writer, because you know, he had the new journal for music. Yes, he was the he editor. Found yep. it. Yes, mm -hmm. and he wrote, um, about, he wrote reviews about Bach um, editions. He called for a complete edition of Bach's works, which hadn't been done before. Right. And he um, was reviewing concerts. And then at the same time, Clara was playing more and more Bach fugues. She played the triple concerto with Mendelssohn together for the very first time in a big concert in the Gewandhaus. House. So the Schumanns were very much part together with Mendelssohn of trying to get Bach just in the heads right. of the audiences here. So it's hard for me to imagine how would these people move from one place to another. We talk about moving the entire piano. So four months of um, clothing and all, all this stuff. How, how did they do that? They would have a huge case. So this is just kind of a modern version of this case, but they would have these huge cases that would be put onto the carriage or onto, sometimes they had trains back uh, in 1839, right before they moved in here, the first trains in Germany were being um, constructed and finished. And these cases would hang clothes. So this is a, a travel dress that like one that she would have worn. And there's a few travel articles of course, very important uh, are good shoes and warm uh, hand warmers, pulse warmers. Um, so this is kind of like a, a travel case that, that this is, is a modern version. That's the size. Exact size. This is as, as tall as I am. <laughs> yeah, they're different. <laughs> of course, you had to have people to, to help you um, carry how do you, them. How do you carry this thing? I mean, <laughs> that is a good question. I think with several people. So you would you would travel yeah. not alone. Um, you would travel with somebody to help you get dressed Servants, because these kinds of dresses you <laughs> could not uh, put on by yourself. So <laughs> too many hooks, too many things right. to to um, uh, yeah to tie in the back, especially for women. And so you had your your nurse or uh, for the children who would take care of the children at home, then you would have a cook at home, and then you would have people, servants who would come with you. So that was part of their lifestyle here. So when they were living in this house, I assume that there were many music making together. Yes, lots of music making. She was the first to play his new compositions and also to critique them. And he also influenced what she should put on her concert programs, but then they also collaborated. And so one of these projects was uh, Liebesfrühling. It's a, uh, a song cycle that uh, both of them contributed songs based on poems by Friedrich Rückert, mm -hmm. and it's called Spring of Love. And uh, Clara wrote several songs in this cycle, and so did Robert. And then his idea was to publish this songbook without telling the publisher who had written which piece. <laughs> and so that was their joint uh, song cycle that they did. This was in 1841, so the first year that they lived here. Was the style, I would assume, pretty similar? Could you tell the difference? Between the songs? Yeah, between the styles and Clara Her and Robert. songs were actually, from that cycle, were played much more often than his. 
in the end. Of course. Um, but, but he wrote so many songs, you know. Um, yeah, I think that she has her own voice. It's very, very particular. You can tell from the uh, from the, the intros and the outros or postludes that uh, she was a pianist. She definitely lets the piano kind of take a solo uh, now and then, but then it goes back for the voice. Right. Definitely different from Robert Schumann's, but they both influenced each other, of course. So how did Clara and Robert Schumann meet? That was here in Leipzig and she was raised by mainly her father because his parents were divorced and he wanted to teach her to play piano very well and he had this dream of her becoming this piano virtuoso. She became famous, so famous that Robert Schumann who really wanted to study piano and become a pianist, he decided he wants to study with her teacher, which was her father. And so he moved into their house and they, and, uh, they studied together and he was nine years older. But eventually when she was 16, first kiss and this romance developed and they wanted to get married. And then Friedrich Wieck put his foot down and said, no. They had a long battle. Uh, they all went to court to get permission to marry and finally they got court permission because she was still under 21 uh -huh. and at the time you had to be 21 to decide to get married on your own or both parents had to say yes right. so her mother in berlin said yes but her father said i don't want you marrying this guy and the parents were already divorced at the time and so both parents had to give their yes either that or they had to go to court so they went to court and they got married one day before she turned 21 and could have done it all by herself anyway, just oh, to show Friedrich Wieck. Yeah, so that's how they got <laughs> married and then they moved into this house.